Um, we are going to record this. <laughs> <laughs> so you can say, got it. Um, so as people still come in, um, Jamie is kind of taking over the Zoom and, and making sure that if your questions start coming through the chat that they get to the room. And I don't, what else? Let's get started. Okay, so we have our two, um, I'll say hosts, even though I'm a host, but I'm not re the real host. Um, and it is Al Alyssa Crum. Woo yes. Yeah. <laughs> She's really excited to be here. Lisa. This is my own fortune. <laughs> We're all real um, Lisa Chandler. Hello. Yep, right there. And um, do we have the third? No, nope. no, nope. and no third, just these two. All right, guys, so take her away. Well, welcome. Welcome. Thanks, thanks for coming. August is going to be fun. Woo. All right. Well, Alyssa brought you candy because she's an awesome host. Yeah. So if you need a candy, it's there. Take it with you. Eat yeah. it all. Yep. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you need to go to the bathroom, right outside this hallway here is the bathroom. Yep. If you need to make a phone call, please step outside as well. Silence your phone. However, I have no reception, so how would you know if you got a phone call? <laughs> <laughs> they did that on purpose. There is no reception as well. Sure, you uh, signed in, got your handouts, um, certificate, agenda. For those of you on Zoom, welcome. Make sure that you typed in your email address. Yeah, I'm reading. <laughs> And I'm caring. <laughs> you're just like, dang, you're just awesome. You should have just yeah. took all the credit for that. Right? <laughs> um, so a little bit about um, Lisa and I were competitors. We both worked for remote support. We wouldn't know. I mean, we just became like BFFs. We're getting Yeah. We're going to get like matching stuff here. Um, so anyways, we do remote support and assistive technology. Um, so that's a little bit about what we do. We um, also are a part of the Excellent Network here in Fairfield County. Yeah, I guess. I think that was good. Okay, perfect. Um, so we're going to kick it off to Kyle, who's going to talk about business values that um, positively impact services. Let's give it up for Kyle. <laughs> One of the things that we've talked about over, um, I don't know, the past, we've talked about a lot about maybe business practices that we could bring to the, uh, the provider groups, the provider meetings, and talk about different things that we could do to improve your businesses or give you opportunities to, for resources to improve your businesses. One of the things I'm really excited to talk about is one time in the rest of the year, I'm not sure which month, and then probably quarterly next year, we're gonna have our assistant superintendent this year. He'll be our superintendent next year. But his former life before he came here was um, a business consultant. So he brings all kinds of a wealth of knowledge for different things with regard to leadership skills, all, all things related to business. Um, from my perspective, you know, I, I'm, I'm not David. I, I don't bring that, but what I bring is, you know, my 20 years of running day programs. Um, I ran day programs in Licking County, I ran day programs in Fairfield County, and just trying to figure out how, what's the best business practice to, to make sure we're as successful as possible. And as we talked about this in the provider meetings before, we talked about a number of different things that just what are some nuggets that can help us take away to maybe run our businesses? And one of the things that always kind of stuck out of my mind is when you know, line up our business that we do serving people with running a small business or even a large business, there's so many things that are basically similar. And, you know, I think primarily the thing for me is, is uh, relationships and communication. We talk about behavior support a lot. We talk about providing services for people. And, and you think about all the things you need to run a, a business, and I know you guys are you're in different types of businesses, it's where, where are those relationships and the communication piece? And I think without either one of those, and either the business supporting people that we do, or running a business, what an agency provider does, it, it's never gonna be successful. It's probably gonna fall short. Um, I think those things are the critical pieces to all of that stuff. So how do we connect all those things? How do we connect um, relationships and communication to what we do? You know, one of the things that I've always tried to teach and work with my new supervisors that work with me is there's three things that you gotta work on. I think they align with all the stuff that we do as a service provider or as a business owner. You know, I think you have to have respect for people. I think you have to trust people. And I think you have to be honest with people. And those, you know, we could talk about those probably for the whole hour. Uh, but I just think those are just some real foundational, fundamental things that help us move our businesses along, 
um, you know, if the people, if, if you're an agency owner or a CEO of an agency or, or uh, an organization, and people know that you're going to do what you say you're going to do, you're going to likely be successful in building relationships with your staff. If you're uh, honest and if you're and, and if you trust that they're doing the best they can, I think we look about behavior support all the time and we, the services that we provide to people. If we really trust that they're doing the best that they possibly can at the moment, I think we're going to build great relationships, have good communication, and we've got a great foundation to go on. Um, and then the respect piece, I think you know, I think we we look at each and every person. And something my mom taught me many, many, many years ago was, um, and I'm, I'm talking seven or eight years old, so many, many years ago, right? Years ago. Many, many years ago. <laughs> um, you know, I, we were we had four elementary schools when I was a little kid, and they were in four different parts of our, our school district. And and I was in I like big league basketball, as that's what I kind of was my thing. And we were going to play this kid from this, the other team that had a kid from another school one, and I was just freaking out because he was the best player on, in the league, and my mom. Was, you know, we had a long discussion about it. And she said, well, you know what? You, Travis is no better than you. But, you know, she didn't stop there. She said, you're not better than anybody else. You know? And I thought, you know, what a great thing. And I meant, it meant nothing to me 50 years ago, right? But you think about that as you get older, you think, you know, people are no better than you. I think that's a great place to start when you build that respect. Does that really support building a business and having a successful building a business? I think what, what better foundation could you have? Similarly, with the people that we provide, if you think about it from that perspective as well, how can we build a better relationship and have better services if we have that kind of respect for the people that we support? Those are just some of the things that we're you know, kind of thinking about that we could look at as you know, things to add to this, the stuff that we do as providers. So one of the things that we're looking at, uh, Rachel does a program uh, with, so, with self-advocacy, all different ages, groups, people all over the um, the county of Fairfield, and they used the uh, this. I, what's the? I know it's Mentor Academy, but where are they from? Global Priority, Global Solutions. Priority Solutions. Basically, it's all about values and character, um, and it's really, really cool stuff. So we were just looking through some of those um, <clears throat> values that they have listed in there, and trying to align some of those with some of the things that we talk about with providing good services and running a good business. And so we picked out basically three of those that we felt like would be really good topics to talk about today, um, being leadership, um, investing in people. I, I, I remind people all the time that sure takes, you, you can't go pick your crops out of the field unless you do a lot of sowing and investing, right? I mean, you spend, how, how long do farmers spend before they reap their, their, their crops? And so I think that's something we have to think about as well. And then the last one is um, planning. And I think those are just three really, really important pieces with regard to running a business or providing services. I think all too often we get in the habit of just trying to put out fires and go from day to day. We never stop and really think of what tomorrow tomorrow's going to bring or how can we make tomorrow better than it is today. So those are just three of the things that we talked about. You know, I, I like to th talk about leadership a lot because we talk in our agency all the time about leadership is not a position. It's about leading where you are. It's not about supervisor or an owner. It's every single one of us. And, and, and you know, David, as I talked about earlier, David, Ooh, um, he likes to define simply leadership is just influence. And it's like how, you know, all of us are in that position at any time in our life, whether a parent, a, a sibling, a child of a parent, you know, there's just all these different things that we have influence on. So that we feel like that's really, really important, not only for the businesses that we operate and the organizations that we, we perform it, but for the services that we provide to the people that we serve. Think about how do we influence And you know, we just talking um, yesterday morning, we were having some discussions about an agency that kind of, kind of needed some support. And one of the things that we talk about so often is I think we forget how much influence we have with the people that we support. Um, you know, they look to us for so much. It's so easy for us to get in the habit of basically being their caregiver and making decisions for them when, because they have that much confidence and trust in us. We have that influence, and for us to be true leaders, how do we transfer as much of that power to them as we possibly can? So I think leadership's just a really, really important piece to run your organization, as well as the supports that we have. Um, investing and planning and, and are just two other real, really important pieces that I think there's things that we can work on. So what we are thinking about today, and it's already 5.30, so I've been talking for a long time. <laughs> the clock on the wall here, ladies. <laughs> it says it's 5.30, which just kind of blows my mind. Uh, at any rate, so we were, what we were thinking about was we'd have some breakout groups. And, and what we've done in the past is someone from our department has always been involved in the breakout groups. And we do all the time. 
and this is a provider meeting. So we felt like today it'd be a really good idea to have some breakout groups of maybe each one of these um, values that we talked about. Let you guys go kind of talk about three different things we put on there for, for, for questions for you. Is identify some characteristics of this value um, and how it basically just talk about some of the things that really this means to you. The other piece was how can this, how can you develop this value in yourself, in your organization? And then how does this value improve the services that you provide? So we're going to pass these out. Um, Jamie's got one. For, are we, we're going to just have one or two virtual groups. <coughs> How many people you got on? Uh, probably, six, six, probably two. Well, you need two. Probably at least two, yeah. yeah so two there and one here. Okay, three, you want to do that? Or three there. Okay. And then. Just do that and we'll do this one. You worry about the Zoom room. So they I, know, can, I know, but am I they can, they can each have the same value, but they can just have breakout groups to talk about. How's so that? give value the third one? Yeah. And three break it into... Yeah. Whatever one I sent you electronically, okay. send them. And then... I'm doing the rooms right now. I had to read the so. so we're going to break out electronically. Jamie's going to put you in breakout rooms, and you're going to have those um, the value of plan, uh, was that was that planning, Jamie? Yes, that was planning. So you have the value of planning. So you get together, break out, talk about those three things. In inside, we've got probably three, twenty-zero, five, seven of us. We can do two, you know, two groups. Just break these out. Take one of these. Um, one can be leadership, and the other one can be investing. And then we'll take we'll take 15 or so minutes and talk about those, and then we'll come back together and we can kind of share out what we learned. And we'll wait till Jamie's ready to do that. Anybody got any questions for me or discussion or ideas about where we're going with that? You mentioned um, the, the the three values that you said. So you said respect, trust, and honesty, right? And then after that, beyond that, there were three other practices. Yeah. So the respect, trust, and honesty are kind of Kyle's philosophy of leadership. Uh -huh. So I, I just kind of want to teach all my, so I think that's really, really good foundational piece. Things we're going to talk, we kind of talk about today are, are leadership in and of itself, uh, planning and investing. Got it? Mm -hmm. Actually, if I'm not even right, it's trying to be very clear whether the values we should focus on should be relationship, communication, or should we focus more on leadership? For our That's breakout it. groups today, we're going to talk about, you guys are going to talk about influence and which is leadership. So you and Sonny and Felix, Felix, I'm sorry. I, new names, I forget them all. Um, so you guys talk about that one and the, the four of you guys, maybe you guys can turn around a little bit. These guys talk about, is that the best thing? Okay. And we'll, uh, we'll break out. You guys can go ahead and start. We'll call you back together when Jamie's ready. Right, hi, welcome back everyone. Um, Kyle, do you want to just pick it up and keep going? Or? I sure can, or cool. you can, however you want to do it. You got it. I got it. Okay, so um, I'm sure that you probably already have identified a spokesperson for your group. What we're going to go, we were thinking about coming back to, come back to the group, come back and everybody together, and maybe your spokesperson could share out some of the things we talked about, about the three bullets that you had in your group. Um, maybe the best to start online with those guys, Jamie, can you? Connect with who I don't know who was in the group. So, somebody from the three breakout groups want to start off from the virtual gang? Yes. Um, start for us. <clears throat> yes. So, what we talked about is planning. That's the piece that we were able to discuss. And um, from from the discussion that we had, we said planning is being organized, um, having structure. Um, we have to have structure working in this field um, to help the individuals um, become comfortable, um, to minimize anxiety. Um, let's see. So one of the young men um, I think it's Edwin, he had discussed how he has one-on-ones with his operations managers and they discuss um, the needs of the staff, the consumers, and what they're going to work on for that next week. Um, Catherine, she talked about um, the client that she works with, how she provides structure um, for her client to help him be more comfortable and um, minimize any behaviors. Um, we utilize calendars um, to help us be more organized. 
Um, let's see. Oh, uh, I think that's all. Okay. Also, um, planning in our personal lives. Um, if we're starting our own businesses, we plan for retirement. We plan for um, sending our kids to college. And that's something that you do years prior to, um, and you give yourself like a time limit. Um, let's see. Let's see. So my uh, final summary is as leaders, we must create a structured environment to support the people that we serve. That's all I have. Nice. Tamara, do you have the names of all the people that were in your, in your group just so we could have an idea who they were? Yes, we have Catherine, we had Ed one, and we had Teresa, but she wasn't present. And then we had, I think it was Josh. Let me find his name. Stewart or something. No, Josh. I can't find his name. Uh, there he is. Joshua <laughs> Stevens. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And then another group from um, that was a virtual group that talked about the same value. Anybody want to volunteer? Spokesperson? Because you don't want Jamie calling you out. Because she will. How about another group, Jamie? I, I dropped the ball. I didn't write down everybody's name. <laughs> <laughs> but I know Kim and Liz and Allison and Lynette. Lynette? Lynette, how about your group? Okay, we talked about planning also, and I uh, basically we came up with um, planning ahead of time. Um, certain, uh, so the person would know what they say we're going to be doing things. I like to plan um, the weekend before the week, um, so that they, well, my daughter wouldn't know because I only work. I work to my daughter, so I like to let her know the week ahead. I, we did discuss about. Um, the winter times, how it's more hard to, um, to plan because you don't know what the weather storm and if centers are going to be closed or um, your plans have to change completely. So I try to um, let her know the night before if that we know the center is going to be closed. We I always have a plan A and a plan B for winter time. Summertime is a little bit more, you know, easy. We, we stick with the plan a little bit more, but in the winter time, we know we might have to come up with a plan B. Very good. Yeah. So that's basically what we talked about in my group. And we um we did say planning makes you more organized and prepared for the day. Thanks, Lynette. Thank you. And who was in my group? <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. I because I can't put I can't, I'm very bad at pronouncing names. So please call yourself out if uh, you was it was uh, it was Melissa yes Melissa me, yes Kim Conrad and Rachel Hoy thank you I'm so sorry guys you're welcome we we did talk a little bit <laughs> thanks Allison for chiming in there glad to see you too and the last group. Hi, my name is Miriam. Actually, um, I was in a group, and it's my first time to attend the meeting. So nobody in my group spoke. I didn't know how it ran. So I was in a group, but nobody actually said anything. But I want to talk a little bit about leadership. I don't know who all was in my group, if anybody was listed to know, wanted to talk about um, anything at all. Yeah, there was no discussion. My first time to come in the group and I didn't know how things work. So I don't know. Yeah. It was a great learning <laughs> opportunity for you. Then. You'll know next time. Okay. Now I know how it works and I did uh, a little research on leadership. Uh, the first thing I, I, what I, I, the way I lead is being an example myself and try to um, bring out the quality that I want to say in my staff and my people that I care for. So I kind of put myself in that 
um, position. I feel like as a leader, there's nothing that I cannot do. So my staff can see that, oh, if she's doing it, that it's not too big for me to do as well. Like I can as well implement what she's doing. So I set myself an example for everybody that works for me and with me that um, this is how we care for the people. They are just people like us. And then we have to take that, um, their feelings and respect them and then um, be able to for them as we care for ourselves and our family. Very good. Is there anybody else from Marianne's group that would want to share any other details? Well, we thank you guys for sharing because it kind of is it's difficult when we've got people in the building and people on screen. So thanks for all that. Um, some of the things I'd written down when I was thinking about the value of planning, um, some of the characteristics of the value of planning, I think you're having a defined goal or a vision, I think is really, really important. Um, setting aside time for planning, I think that's one of the things that so hard to do in our day-to-day -day lives, when our work lives is finding time to plan because you see, have so many things trying to keep all the plates spinning all the time. It's like, how do I fit that in? But I think it's really important. Um, identify resources, people, budgets, materials, everything needed to accomplish your goal. Um, uh, another value of planning is being a great, having great communication and taking time to reflect and adjust on the plan. Again, how do you find plan time to plan? It's really hard. We know that, but the old saying is, if you fail to plan, you play the plan to fail. So just one of the other things that, uh, some of the things I listed as ways to develop the value of planning, plan to plan, you know, it's just, it's simple, but it's, it's kind of really works good. Defining goals, get input and look uh, at the goal from different perspectives, work with your team, work with your friends, work with other people to kind of see if your goal is really what you need to be um, and set specific goals like steps to get to those goals. The last thing I had with our bullets was how does the value of planning improve services? And you guys all really touched on all of these things. You're better prepared for emergencies, you know, plan A, plan B. Um, you're mission driven, you know where you're going because you've got a plan and that's what you're trying to provide your services the way you want. Of course, we all have outcomes that we have to work with with the people that we support. So that kind of gives us some direction there as well. And then um, plans in place for interruptions. And again, that's more of those contingencies, plans B and C and D, sometimes you need them all. So thank you guys for that. Um, then it brings us to our in our in-person groups. We had one group that was talking about leadership and the other investing. Who wants to volunteer to go first? You got it. I got Allison. it. Allison. All right. So my lovely group here. <laughs> we had investing. Um, identify some characteristics of the value of investing. Um, some of the things that we discussed was how important it was to make sure that we put our phones away. Um, have conversations with the person um, that you're conversating with, uh, respect their time, value them, and try to bring out the communication in them. I think, you know, by drawing out, um, asking questions, um, really getting to know, you know, what you're communicating with them is very important. Um, it's part of kind of investing time with them. Um, how can you develop the value of investing? Planning involving the person in the planning, giving them choices, um, short-term, long-term planning, um, know the difference between the two, make sure that they know the difference, and a lot enough time when it comes time to planning and investing. So that way, um, you're not scrounging, like you're not um, cutting corners, you're giving yourself enough time um, and it's not causing stress. How does the practice of investing improve services? Investing in others and ourselves will overall get better outcomes. Um, continuing education also gives better outcomes. And that's what we came up with. Great job, guys. Um, and again, a lot of the things that I know already written down, a lot of the things you guys pulled out as well. It just seems, um, and I heard somebody mention it early on in this group talking about being intentional. I think it's so important that when we, um, we can't fake it. You just can't fake it because you can pretend to invest in people, but people see right through it. I mean, we can all see, see it. And so uh, I think you guys mentioned it. You even mentioned it again in your, in your um, sharing out. So thank you for that. Um, being deliberate and intentional just seems to be really important. One of the things for me I think is so important, um, 
and just in my personal life thing, I, I, I know that I'll probably get some bad looks here. One of the things I try, try really hard to do, I don't always pull it off, is to move my computer screen and my phone away from me when I meet with somebody because there's such a distraction. We have, so, mm -hmm. Allison said, turn off your phone. All those things are such distractions and it really, and again, sends the message that you're really not investing in the person at all if you're not really focused on it. So thanks guys, really, really good. Um, the last group, um, leadership. And I was thinking they kind of, they pointed to you and Jerry Allen, hey Sonny. Um, hi, I'm Sonny. I um, had the pleasure to speak with Kelly, Richard, and Felix. Um, and uh, it was a great learning opportunity, honestly. So our value was leadership slash influence. And so some characteristics that we came up with was first and foremost, this person is great at communicating. Um, and above that, they are great at listening. They want to hear what ideas other bring to the table. This person possesses the growth mindset. They are, they want to grow, right? The growth, the growth is the, the, pro, the pro, project, not the result. So problem solving, this person is here to help everybody um, so this person has high expectations, or uh, not only for others, for themselves as well. And finally, this person is empathetic. They they want to understand the emotions that are happening as well. Um, developing this value of influence. Um, so having having meetings, check ins to allow us to hear from others, um, think of what ideas they have. Um, again, accountable. Accountable. This person's got to be able to receive feedback from everyone. Um, not only receive, but also give to you guys that are uncomfortable to give. Um, this person celebrate other people, um, celebrate successes, large or small, Let's help people feel seen and such. Um, and then this person um, kind of encompassing us all, this person is a servant leadership, meaning this person doesn't see the people they manage as underneath them. They are there to serve that person, how to serve their staff, how do they help them be successful? How do they help them um, look, like see the strength that are there instead of seeing like working towards the weaknesses. Um, and then what value does influence provides? Uh, it provides buy-in. Buy-in it promotes um, a sense of joy when everybody's on the same page and everybody's working together. Um, it helps our morale um, as a team. And then um, a good leader will will project a, a vision of why for all their, or their staff. What, why is this work important? And then that makes it look more personal for the staff and it makes the, the work that much more like great. So, that's that's a lot good. of ums, a lot of us. <laughs> Very, <good. laughs> Very, Very awesome. awesome. And, and again, I think all those things spot on. I had a lot of those things written down as, as my notes as well. And there's one the one section about how do you develop this uh, this value of influence. And it's hard because um, a lot of times if you're older and more experienced and been around a lot longer, it seems like you're ex the expectations there. Newer people to the field, I think there's there's some things that we can do that I think we overlook sometimes in learning more things, getting developing, um, increasing your knowledge, developing your intuition and your experience, and all that stuff that, that, that influences your leadership even more. Uh, and again, the last one, how that provide better services. I mean, you hit you hit that park. I mean, when you've got an agency that believes in all these things, all of a sudden it's going to carry over into the services that we provide. So, very very cool. I think it was great. I'm sure nice that none of the provider community resources group had to be a part of that because you guys did it. You took it, ran with it. It was fantastic. So thank you for all of that. Um, all the groups. Thanks so much. The, you wanted to run with the last bullet. Nope, I think we're out of time. It's cool. Um, I think uh, you guys think did an amazing job. Some of the time with you to do the last poll. No, no, I think it's fine. Okay. All yeah. Right. I just maybe you guys can keep the conversation going. You've met each other. Hopefully, you've made some some contact and reach out to one another. Keep things going. Support one another. So thank you all for doing this again. I, I think from my perspective. Uh, like I talked about at the beginning, leadership stuff. I mean, you pull off any book off of a shelf or you watch a, a, a TED Talk or any of those leadership things you can find online or just an article, and you're going to see all these things that we talked about and many, many more. But even though you'll see all these things, it's interesting how they just right, uh, directly align with the services that we provide. You know, if you're, if you're having better influence with your staff, if you're developing your staff, how much that's going to improve the services that we provide if that's what you're carrying that out with the services that we do as our agency. Thank you all for doing that. Um, I guess that's, I'm out of time. Is that what you're saying? You did it. So, right. Hey, thank you everybody. And um, I'm I'm here all night, so come, come again. <laughs> so Jan, I want to share the I, I needed just a few more minutes, so if you could, just get <laughs> Thanks everybody. Thank you.
Thanks. I don't know. Um, so the big thing that we're going to do today is talk about um, some things. You know, we, we said we would bring to you all um, quarterly, quarterly reviews, of things, quarterly reviews of things. And so um, last time, if you were part of it, we talked about the incident report and we kind of you know, did a little deeper dive and why we do an incident report. So this time we're going to talk about um, the UI log and we're going to talk about why it's important. So next slide. Um, so the UI log is important and this comes um, directly from uh, DODD's MUI and registry to think. So the UI log is to identify trends and patterns um, and to address and ensure health and safety. And you know, those are the big paramount things, always health and safety. Um, all providers are required to do them. Whether you're an independent provider, whether you are, everyone is required to do those. Um, that we are required as the county board to look at samples of them and give feedback on those. And that DODD will review those. And what the important thing is, is that when you have a compliance review, they may ask you for your logs. They may ask you for the incident reports that are supported by those logs. So we we'll to talk about some best practices of how to make that a little bit more organized for you. Um, and then there's such an emphasis um, on unusual incident investigations and, and doing things from the last two rule changes, really. Um, and so that's one of those important pieces of things. So that's why they are important. Next slide. And when we look at a UI log, you're doing this monthly. So everything monthly that's happening, you're addressing those um, core health and safety, you're searching for those trends and patterns, and you're taking action as a provider, as a team, and then you are developing that all you're doing is yelling out prevention and health and safety. So that's just like the, the, one of the big things that we really want to take is that it's a process that has to be done monthly. Next slide. Um, so the unusual uh, report log, every independent provider, agency provider must maintain them. Um, both independent and agency providers um, you know, once a month, you need to make sure that you are reviewing those. Um, you need to be looking at them. If you need to pull in a couple more things, if you, you know, just have a committee, have some help from things, let us know if you're struggling with something. Um, it's very important to be looking at those uh, fast tracked. And then um, making sure that we are taking those trends and patterns and developing new ways to help understand and, and promote health and safety. Next slide. So this is the list from DODD that they say are your absolute, these must be on your UI log. If you, it went forward. Or did, okay. Um, these must be on your log. So here's you some examples. If you go to DODD's website and look under the end, there's a drop down. So you see dentals, you hit on it, there's a drop down. Gives you a little cue about that. So use, use their website as a resource. Um, but these are the things you need to make sure. Program implementations, you know, those are the things that used to be neglect sometimes where we left somebody in the car for a minute, but nothing happened. Or somebody fell asleep, asleep during their slip, fell asleep during their shift, but nothing happened. You still need to be documenting those and thinking about process, thinking about how to make things better. The biggest thing is that this is that defined list that they absolutely want to see, but you need to remember in a person-centered world that we work in, there can be other things that are particular to that person that need to be tracked and it can be on there. What they don't want to see on there is I walked into a table and I got a small little like scrape on my leg. Yeah, you might need to let the team know that might be in communication notes. That might be those things, but doesn't need to be on your UI log. Okay, next slide. Next slide. <laughs> so the UI log must, and this is one of those things that the state doesn't put in their list, but I put in my list, is the provider name. You would be amazed at how many logs get sent in, and I don't know who sent them in. Um, you would be amazed how many people send in their provider log, and they may have their name, but they only put the initials of the individual. So it's a seek and find. Um, so we want to make sure that we're putting your name foremost at the top of that. It's your report. It's your piece that you're going to need for compliance and do those things. The name of the individual, 
a brief description of the of the UI, um, injuries, treatment, time, date, location, cause of concern, factors, prevention plan or prevention measures. Very important. Those are the things that are the elements that are uh, needed for your log. Next slide. So this is an example of the UI log. And I know that we've had some back and forth discussions and I apologize that I was off for a period of time and have not had some time to get back with the state to figure out because everybody kind of has some issues about it's too small to type in and to do those things. And I'm still working on that. I'll, I'll get back with that. So this is where you can go. It is a fill in document. You can keep typing in it and, and fill it out. And that's the complete. Page. So next slide is a little bit a more blown up piece of this so we could talk about it a little bit more. So um, as you can see, the elements are on there that we talked about. You'd also be surprised how many of these come in that half of those things have nothing in them. Just like, so it's a lot of search and trying to find, and that is something that the state would, would not be happy with if they were to have come to your compliance review and your logs look like that. So everything has to be filled in. There should be no blank. Well, so, you know, you might have something that, um, you, you know, you don't have, but you should be putting not applicable or, you know, something that helps, we, you know, avoid blanks as much as possible. Or you'd be surprised that I just get some turned in with somebody's name and the date and that's it. So that that's, you know, the next slide. And this is the bottom part. And this is the part that is who reviewed it. That's an important piece too, because if there are questions, we want to know who to direct them to, how to know that the state wants to know if they're like you, you were the new person and somebody else reviewed these, it might help along the process of looking at something. And then there's these um, boxes, trends and patterns, yes, no, um, and whether they've been addressed. And those have to be answered. That is something that they will tell us that if you have not checked one of those boxes, we must send it back for clarification and correction. So it's really important to make sure and to put in that space what action was taken. Um, so those are really important um, pieces of this to make sure it's fully filled out. So next slide. So how should a provider document when they don't have any UIs? Well, the state answered this in their webinar in 2014 that they would recommend that on a UI log that you mark, there were no UIs. So you can literally turn it in or put it in your records because not having the piece of paper is, if it's not there, it's not done, right? So that's one of those big pieces. So if you have none at all, then you just write the person's name, put a line through it, no things. And at the bottom of no trends and patterns, no trends and patterns, make sure you sign it no action was needed. Just fill it like that. Now, I will tell you that if in a random sampling of things, I constantly am getting logs that say there's no UIs, then we're going to be probably reaching out and doing some clarifications because folks, this there's UIs. I mean, things happen with people. When we get in these no UIs, no UIs, that's when we start to wonder if people don't understand reporting processes, if people don't understand the definitions, if we're missing MUIs. So again, not picking on anybody, but we wanna make sure that we are doing what's the most important thing that we wanna do in our business. Okay. Is health okay. and safety, right, actually. Okay, so next slide. So these are some references from the rule. We're just gonna skip on. We're just gonna, I just wanna make sure that everybody always says, where is it in the rule? Um, so next slide. So under M, it talks about what are the requirements for unusual incidents. And I put these in here because I want to remind everyone that it specifically says that you're um, required to investigate UIs. So we, we're going to be having a series about that, that those who are responsible for those things, and that will be an upcoming training. Um, and that you are looking at all of the um, pieces and making sure to look at uh, health and welfare. And the other part of this is that the new shift in the 2019 rule is that members of the individual's team, the team shall ensure that risks are associated. The provider is responsible for that investigation, bringing it to the attention of the team, and the team is supposed to be collaborating with you to make sure that it's changed in the plan, supports are added, and that's your verification and documentation of what is needed. So that's a super important part of that. Next slide.
Um, the other part is just the part where it talks about each agency provider is required to do these. And then it talks about that C25, which is the list of the unusual definitions. So next slide. Sure. I just, I want to, I just learned when we had our, we had our in-service on Friday with Lorelai. Uh -huh. And we, when we were doing the logs, we were just across the board, no incident. We were not listing our, our consumers individually. Yeah. Right. So that's yes, it's very important to make sure that we know who you're reviewing. That's the other piece is that we it, sure it's great that, you know, but who are you reviewing? And so that needs to be listed so that, you know, six months from now, it could be a different group of people. And so one log could have this people. And so we need to know who it is you're reviewing that you actually were looking at those individuals that were part of the program at that month that you were reviewing for your incidents. So next slide, sorry. It did go back to the same slide, so if that confused you. So I just wanted to do the drop down. So wait. <laughs> yeah. So this is the slide that was earlier, but this is that C25 that they're talking about. So I just kind of wanted to bring that back and say, here's that list again. Okay. This is your important list. All right. Next slide. Um, and then here's the oversight. The oversight is the part where we're required to do a random sampling of things and that the uh, state samples us. So we have programs at school. We have um, project search, we have things, you know, we have to do the same things that are limited as service provide things, have those logs, do those things, and they can review them at any time. The state also could call us up and say, do you have, uh, you know, Samaritan Center's logs? Because you're supposed to turn them in every quarter, and I don't have them, then they're, that's, the, they can do that. So just turn them in, just turn them in. Okay, next slide. So I wanted to break down, so it's just a little piece of this. So the provider is responsible to do it monthly for your individuals and for your sites. So if you are someone who has a day program and a residential program, you need two logs. You need a log for your, because we're also looking at patterns in places as well as trends between individuals and, and different things going on, right? So you need to make sure to do that. The county board quarterly will do a sampling and then DODD annually um, will look at the county board programs, the county board process of how we're reviewing them and how we're responding and sampling of your all's logs. So that's why those are super important components. They all end up going back to each other. Next slide. Oh, or when requested. So remember that, you know, turn them in quarterly, but if we say, hey, it's uh, July and I just want to see your logs. That's, it's important to, to have those available at any time. Um, what is a trend? I always get this, like, what's the difference between a trend and a pattern? And everything that I can find in the six years that I've been working here is only a definition for trend. So a trend is something that's the same or similar incident that happens three times in a week or five times in a month. So at the end of the month, when you're taking those logs and looking at them, it might not dawn on you right at that moment that, wow, I didn't realize that Kyle was throwing his pencils at, you know, Leslie every, you know, day for three days in a row until I looked at it after the fact, right? Sorry, Leslie. Right. <laughs> you're not here, so <laughs> you're, he's going to throw them to you through the computer. She's in the, she's in the computer, but he's throwing pencils at you, I swear. But um, so that's the kind of thing. It helps you look back because we are busy. We do have those things, and it really does help us see. Um, now, a pattern is something that's happening across programs, across different areas. A uh, pattern is something that's happening with a specific staff. A pattern is something that's happening at a specific time. You know, like maybe they're only having that. So those are the types of things that you want to be looking at and, and doing that. So three in a week, five in a month, same individual, similar type incident. Next slide. And for your annual, when you're looking at things, you're going back and it's three MUIs, no matter what they are for a person or five in a year for a person is what the state is looking at for that. So an important thing to think about when you are doing your UI logs, you've filled it out, you've done that, and you've turned that uh, incident report in and it turns into an MUI, still gonna be on your log, 
your UI log. But over in that far corner, there's a thing that says UI or MUI. So if it turns into an MUI on your log, please write that number that's been assigned and that you've gotten that notification and everybody's been asking you a thousand things to send your 72 hours of notes and this and that and the others and, and all of this stuff. Put that MUI number so that when the compliance comes and they pull your log and they're looking at that and they go, oh, yeah, it was filed. Boom, boom, they're going to move on. <laughs> they're not going to be. So that's important. And it's important for you, too, because at the end of the year, when you're doing that annual report, which we're going to talk about at our next quarterly thing, you know what your MUIs are because your logs have them all listed right nicely there for you. And you're not going back and searching everywhere for this. So it's a tool that's making your time more effective and your supports in a better place um, as you're going along. Um, and so that's a, a super important part. Um, when I say the MUI number, so when it happens, it's the year that it happened in, our county code, and whatever number it's fallen into the sequence that DODD has assigned it. Um, another best practice that I could say would be when you're doing your UIs, starting at the beginning of the year, come up with some way to, to number them for either the individual or for, because that also will help you. So if you got AJ1, AJ2, whatever, something, and then it says on there like UI log numbers or something, it helps you have some, a better way of efficiency as well, just as a best practice note. Yes. So what if um, you're looking over your monthly log and you see that it's not the same person, but somebody's falling down at the same location at your, at, at your apartment or at your program? in a month. Is that a trend? So not the same person? Different people. Right. So that's probably a pattern. Issue. That's probably a pattern of a concern. Okay. So something. So go back and look. Oh, they're all falling over the same thing. I had this example with somebody yesterday, actually, that it's like, you know, saying to them, what if somebody, you know, you have three people who've fallen and you go back and look and every one of them, it was at the bookcase area. And you go, so now you're finally looking and realize there's something sticking off the bookcase that needs to be fixed. That's your prevention measure. It's just that simple. <laughs> well, just that simple. I think it's really an advantage of using, doing yeah. the, the, the reviews. Reviews. review because you would never know if you just were looking at each individual yeah. person if you're looking at them over, over the whole month. Right. So that's your trend is for, you know, person and things. Patterns are across things as, as we talked about. Good, good point, Kyle. Um, next slide. So what are you looking for when you do a provider log? So this is from DODD's, re, you know, their um, webinar from 2014. So it's like they're kind of telling us during this webinar, what are we looking at as a county board? What are they looking at? What you should be looking at? So what are we looking for? Next slide. So came this all this information came from that webinar. So they are saying good clues of a good UI log system um, that they contain all the elements. That's that important part about making sure we have names and things. Um, and then their best practice information is making sure the immediate actions are actually on the log, the cause and contributing factors, and the staff involved. Making sure you're noting those things because again, like you know, Kyle said, when you go back and look and you're starting to see, wow, there's this verbal aggression with five different people that are, and you see some common denominators. Not saying that, that but it's maybe some burnout, maybe some personality conflicts, maybe time of day, maybe it's when you're shorthanded the most, lots of things that can go out there, not saying about the specific staff. Um, so those are those next things. Next slides. And the other things that they talk about is make sure that good immediate actions are listed, you know, saying what they are, um, you know, that they got, you know, seen by someone, EMS came, you know, what protections were done, making sure those are or spelled out, tell that story, because you're going to go back in a month. Yeah, you might remember right in that moment, but when you're looking at that log, you're like, wait a minute, you don't want to have to keep going back and trying to find the information to do your review. Um, no blank spaces. Um, an unknown is rarely used. Um, cause and contributing factor, unknown. That, that's like, they don't like that. Um, I don't like that because we know that things don't just happen. Uh, prevention plans are specific and they address the cause and contributing factor. So prevention plans should answer what you think might have been part of causing the incident. Always important. Next slide. 
Um, so this one is um, the prevention section doesn't say we'll continue to monitor, we'll follow the plan, because obviously not to knock anybody, but maybe the plan's not working. So we don't want to just keep following if we're having like five or six UIs, right? Or we're having a bunch of MUIs. We don't probably just want to keep continuing that same plan, right? Not, not good. Um, mindful of the person's needs, diagnosis, and don't use phrases like remind Susie to be careful, redirect as needed. Those are nice, good, fast answers that you know you redirected someone, but it doesn't tell what you did to redirect them. It doesn't say that you're using certain training pieces like set planning or, you know, or different things. Put what you're doing. And also, too, just telling someone who might be having trouble walking to be more careful probably is not very preventative to them and might be a little bit demeaning to them. So let's think about those things. Um, prevention plan is not generic, like, oh, we just followed the medical um, advice, we reminded them of safety, we just told staff to monitor it. So, yes, those are probably things that you're kind of doing, but how are you doing them? Be more, um, you know, explanatory in what's going on. Um, there is no evidence of unreported MUIs. That would be a great thing on a log, because the last thing I want to read is a log and go, <gasps> Oh gosh, and then go look back and not be able to find and find that something didn't get reported and something didn't happen. So not finding those are also good things. Remember, if you're reviewing your log and you find it then, that's when you report it right away, okay? And if you've done your immediate actions and you've been doing things, we probably don't have a failure to report necessarily because health and safety has been done unless it is an abuse or something that falls into one of those things that it's more important that some immediate actions were done in different ways and reporting pieces. Um, they need to have detail, tell the story, everything that we're talking about, which you all are talking about here in leadership and doing things and communicating and doing, tell the story, help others understand. When that UI goes to those notified people, the guardian, the ISC, residential, transportation, you know, whoever else on the team it goes to, the, you know, you might know, what you're talking about in your program or your things that is specific to that, but maybe they're not realizing, oh yeah, they're doing that at home too, but they're not getting the breakdown of that limited piece of explanation and description. Um, and it might be something to bring up at a team meeting next time and review those UIs. Um, any patterns that um, clearly identify and have action steps. So not just, you know, we met with the team. What actions did you take from meeting with the team? to help those happen. Next, next slide. So best practices, because we wanna stay on the straight road and not a curvy, uh, crazy one. So next slide. So immediate actions, that's one of the things that they put outside of their list in red. Um, the state says, you know, and again, immediate actions are whatever you did to help promote health and safety at that time. Um, next slide. Um, identifying cause and contributing factors. This is something, how, how comfortable does everybody feel with that process? Everybody feel like something happens, you can pretty much look at that incident and come up with cause and contributing factors pretty easily. So one um, tip is to take it and break it down. Look at the human things that could have happened, the process things that could have happened, the environment, the equipment, the materials. So breaking those things down to help you identify cause and contributing factors are, are good, good ways to do that. Next slide. Um, how to start to identify. So these are just some questions asked, like, is there a history with this person? What's their supervision level? You know, um, using some root cause tools, um, things that help you break down in a team if you're really struggling with, if we just don't know, they're just doing it. Like maybe inviting team to have those kinds of discussions. Um, so there's, it can be really anything, but these are just some things to start thinking about that fit into those four, five things, materials, human, process, equipment, materials, environment. All right, next slide. So if you always do what you've always did, you'll always get what you always got. So we just need to make sure that we're always taking things to reduce, um, to look at problems and promote outcomes. That's what we're in the business of doing, right? It's getting people to be more sustainable, safe, happy. That's, that's where we are. So prevention is just that. 
Next slide. And you can use some things when I talked about some of those tools. Um, if you're having trouble doing it, do the five whys. Use some uh, diagrams to look at cause and effect. Look at timelines, brainstorm, do a checklist of that person. Help you think about a little bit outside of the box if it's happening over and over and over. And it's just, I don't know, it just always happens. At noon, it happens. Something has to be more underlying. Um, next slide. Um, and in those prevention plans, can't express enough to say, you know, who's responsible for doing? We're going to do, they're going to go to the doctor, um, or we're going to schedule the appointment. Who's scheduling it? When is it done? Did it happen? Following up that it happened, verifying those things and having that stuff. Set actions. Um, next slide. So being specific, measurable, assignable, uh, realistic, and time-related. If you follow those kinds of cues, you're probably going to have great prevention plans and you're probably going to have less incidents. Maybe not right away because it doesn't happen magically because we have to do trial and error, but following those types of things and making sure you're meeting those kinds of um, examples will help you. Next slide. So things to avoid. Any questions so far? I know you can say them as you go, but I just kind of want to yeah, um, a little bit ago, you uh, there were some phrases that you said not to sure. include in the report. Um, what if the plan, for example, with the team is like, I have a consumer who will um, have accidents when certain people are around to get their attention. And the plan for the with the team is to log it as it happens and then we can discuss about it at the next meeting. And so during the, I, on the IR, we'll, I will write, record, report to team, and that's about that. Um, so I would probably define that a little bit more to say report to the team based on tracking that we are doing for um, similar, similar behavior, in, you know, like something that indicates that it's not just, oh, I'm just going to tell the team about it. Mm -hmm. So expand on that just a little bit because I come in and just see that I don't. So you tell the team what, that he had an accident or, you know, so it's you know, per team discussion, uh, logged it on tracking form, Got it. you know, so you are taking an action step with that because you have already done that. But my problem with that would be if I saw that too much is what's that next action? When are you reviewing? So, you know, you might say, um, logged per team discussions for this, but we are going to meet uh, in two weeks because we've, you know, identified this as it's getting more um, severe or happening more often or something of that. Answer more of those next actions because you just get stuck in, oh, I told the team. And then what do we hear later when somebody says, well, I've told the team, I've told the team, I've told the provider, I've told the ISC, I've told this, I've told the guardian. Nobody's doing anything. So we're just still getting, you know, like we need to get a step past and break that cycle of that being that our kind of complacent answer to things. And we know we're still dealing with it, but how are we not just using that as our, always our answer? Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. Things to avoid. So we want to avoid that. It was a, just a generic accident. You know, like those are some phrases that um, we want to avoid that there was just unknown reason. We want to avoid those, blank sections. Um, we want to avoid continuing to monitor or follow the plan. Um, and we want to remember who are we reminding? We need to be educating staff about the risks in the plan, the protocols, the processes that we're training to help support the person, not just reminding the person they should do something differently. So you might still do that. You might remind. Remember we talked about the fact that if we turn our lights on, we can see where we're going. But that's not you know, enough. What are we doing to make sure that there's not something that needs to be additional responses and responsibilities within an incident that continues to happen? So next slide. So using resources and uh, supporting documents. I just always like to remind people that when you're thinking about prevention plans, when you're reviewing these logs and maybe your answer wasn't or, we've, you, or you start to see there's a, a trend of or, you know, four falls for somebody or, or different things. What are we doing to train people? What are we doing to take those next steps? You know, health and safety alerts are great training tools. You don't even have to recreate anything. They're right there for you to utilize. If you're running out of ideas of things to do preventable, um, 
making sure that if it was that staff needed to be trained, you know, how many mismeds that I get um, that it says mismed, uh, cause and contributing factor, staff got busy. Prevention plan, staff will um, make sure to check more closely. Like, you know, we need some more definable ways that we're making sure. That looks like, like I went back later and saw there was blanks and what are good answers, right? What are good short answers? Cause I'm trying to fill something in. We're not really taking actions out of those. Um, just referrals to other supports, um, making sure changes and plans are updated and used, um, you know, and follow up who's doing it and keep doing that. You will probably find over the next year that the county board will be reaching out after MUIs specifically and some, some unusual incidents that are like on that border of what have you done in the last, you know, how's it changed in the last 30 days? And I can guarantee if you have an MUI and within 30, 60, 90 days, that same person has a similar MUI, we're gonna be going back to that prevention plan that was turned in the first time, figuring out what's been doing and you know what changes have been done to be helping assist with that. Not to lay blame, helping to assist. So just remember, that's what we're here to do um, is help with that. So um, next slide. So these next few slides are, still, are from that webinar. So these are some examples of good UI. This is what the state think that all of your logs are gonna, gonna look like. <laughs> so I'm not saying that everything has to be a paragraph long, but they're looking for detail. Um, I know you can't read what that, and I think you can hit the, um, um, the, um, the little uh, magnifying glass on the thing and it'll, oops, sorry. I got you. And it'll bring it up a little bit or a section will bring it up a little bit maybe yeah so it may not make it any clearer but so you, you know you can just see that you know they said what was the description of the incident well after cleaning dishes um and he turned to walk away and he fell to the ground and his um, head hit the kitchen counter so um there's a bruise on the forehead and then it talks about um Contact a supervisor, nurse, evaluated for injury, um, and then look for the cause of contributing factors. He has a history of falling. Um, when he's around the sink, it was wet. So preventions would be, you know, maybe helping them think about those things, talking about safety things, ensuring ourselves when we're staying within distance. So um, I'll, we'll give you all um, some more information. And again, that webinar, even though it's from 2014, and even though we've had another rule change since then, as a provider who might be reviewing UIs, it's not a bad listen, okay? Just to, to know those things. And you will be probably seeing some communications from the county board in different forms. You know, a lot of times we might have sent an email back and said, you know, thank you for submitting your logs. Sometimes we've sent something back and asked for some clarifications, um, not been able to find something. So some of that stuff may be a little bit more um, structured to those samplings over the next year. So just know that that's coming. So better communication is always best practice. So we're working to do that on our end as well. So next slide. Um, and then this would be an example of a, a good, that bottom part that we talked about is making those X's on yeses or no's, answering um, you know, what actions were taken um, and then who did it and, you know, and, how, and how you're doing those things. So that's important pieces of things and it kind of wraps up all your incidents that you found a pattern in or a trend. Next slide. So unreported MUIs, that's the thing that, you know, it happens. Um, somebody doesn't think about something being an exploitation or somebody doesn't think about it or they thought, well, I thought the rule was $20. And so, you know, whatever, you know, it, it happens. Um, but if we find them now and get them filed is better than a year from now when they come in and they look at your stuff and go, did you report to the county board? Did you? Because the, the state could at that point determine a citation for the provider. Um, there could be failure to reports that could happen. So, um, and the biggest thing is that if we can catch something in a UI pattern or trend, we are less likely to have an MUI happen because we're dealing with it before it gets to that state. Not a promise, not a guarantee but it's less likely. And so those are the things that we wanna think about with unreported MUIs and why this helps you in that 
um, area of things. Next slide. So it's a team process. And I just want everybody to know that no one thinks the team is not trying to address things. So when you are, you know, sitting in your logs or you're being asked things or it's the questions are being done or have you thought of this? No one's thinking, oh yeah, they're just sitting around, not even, we understand it's tough. And sometimes you try the things, you you come up with ways to track stuff. And so it's like, well, but we're looking at this as a process and saying, we got to keep trying. We got to keep looking at it. We got to keep doing those things. So just want to make sure that everybody knows because everybody gets a little uncomfortable when we ask for clarification of something or follow up for something. And it's really not about anything but doing better supports. I can guarantee you that. Now, if you do something really bad, then of course, maybe the response is not so good and we'll be there for those too, but that's not our, our goal or our agenda. All right, next slide. So we're all busy. We all have lots of things going on. We all are doing these incident reports. We're doing all those, right? So before, um, yeah, go to the next slide. What was that unusual slide that was in my, anybody remember? Yep, what was it? Just yelled out. It was a balloon. Yeah, right, it's a balloon dog. So I stuck that in there because, you know, we think about things in the moment or we might remember certain pieces of things. I've asked you, what color was it? Purple. Okay, like, do you have eyes? No. So those are the kinds of things that I just threw that in there so that you could simply think about the fact that in our busy days, things that we know seem really important and we think even I'm going to tell my supervisor this or I'm going to follow up with this with the ISC or I'm going to do this, it, it, they go away from us. If we document, if we um, have a process, if we're using each other and communicating, then we're not going to get lost in the next slide. The unusual slide. And so, um, Hmm. I thought it had eyes. <laughs> so anyway, those are the things that, you know, and everybody remembers something a little differently. And if you think about things as a team and you use those things to discuss and talk about what you can do in prevention, talk about what you think are the cause and contributing factors, you're going to find more things that are going to help you. And then you won't be all twisted up like this poor dog is. <laughs> all right, next slide. Um, so this, the really the kind of the moral of everything that we do is that if you document it, you review it, you verify it, and if you use collaboration and you have innovation about the things, then we're going to be having sustainability in the supports and the individuals' lives that you all are doing a great job to support and to be out there. So that's the end of my story. Next slide. So, any questions? Okay. So, any questions? Any questions from video land? Did anybody put any in the thing? Okay, I was trying to watch the chat and make sure. Yes, sir. How do we get access to it? Can we get access to the notes? Sure. We'll send the slides out. And um, then, like I said, um, the using DODD's website, if you've not gone to the MUI UI um, page, there's so much stuff on there that just as providers, as people who are um, training people using those tools that are already created, if you're doing something that's a best practice, tell us about it. Because maybe, you know, we want you to present next time about how you're doing your review or, or how you found a way to stop putting catchphrases or you know, because I get it. It's it's that's what happens. We're going to track it, and then that's what we think we're going to do. But how are we tracking it? What are we finding from that tracking? Um, yeah, but we can definitely make sure that you have those things. And I'll send out um, some other. Um, you know, I'll, I'll send out the the PowerPoint slides from that 2014. And that caution, though, because you remember, it's 2014 information. We've had a rule change in 2019. So there may be some things that they say and they go, oh, we don't do that anymore. But the general route, I tried to pull out the important pieces, but it's still good. And just listening to Scott and Connie and um, Chuck, who's not even um, 
in the MUI registry anymore. He's at um, Franklin County. Some of you all might do a little cross counties. Just listen to them talk about it and, and do some of those things. It's, it's just good, good things that make you think sometimes. So any other questions? Everybody's ready to turn in their logs because quarterly things about to happen and we've got good ones and they're not going to be blank and they're going to have people's names on them and Jen's going to be so happy. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Next slide. Oh, I thought you were going to. Nope. Just one more. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> like I said, it's going to be a less dramatic, but <laughs> anyway, so that's what, uh, and then this is just a uh, part of that smart acronym piece, just you know, where that came from. And it's just good practice. So anyway, um, yeah. Catherine asked, where do I place client's name on the UI report? Okay. So. And so if you are looking on the um, unusual uh, log, so at the top it says provi provider facility and then Montier County. And then the um, next white areas will say name, UI number, uh, date and time, injury across there. So it's the first column on the right hand side that you would put their name. Yeah, she's sharing it. So I'm going to go to the, actually, I'm going to go to this one so that maybe it's a little bigger. Maybe I can't do it. So does everybody see it's in that first column where it says name? And again, this is a form that they've made available for people. But if you want to do it where you're putting the person's name and filling out a section with this, as long as it has the elements and the com required components, it can come in, you know, however works best for you. Just don't forget the components and specifically the box that says you did not identify any or you did identify, you took action or you did not take action and what those actions were. Those are the, the least answered questions on the log. <laughs> so we would list all the consumers that were serving that month. If there were no MUIs for that particular person, then we across there, we would put NANANA, or would we put literally write out no? So, so let's just say, um, for example, you had five consumers in your program, and for the month of um, August, you had no UIs. List all their names, and then you could put no UIs and just X through, but their names are on there. So we know who it is you're saying there were no UIs for, okay? And then no trends and patterns, no actions needed, you know, nothing happened to this, you know, and sometimes you might even want to say, like, um, we had a water leak and we were closed for half of the month. <laughs> you know, like, you might note that on your log, because again, like I said, if we're continually getting, you've got five people and nothing is ever happening on the 12 things that could happen, somebody falling or somebody being, you know, relocated because whatever happened or, you know, we're going to be like, okay, <laughs> are you just putting no UIs and hoping we don't review these? Because we literally do take the person, go look at what has been turned in and, you know, kind of match up and make sure that, because I have also found when someone's turned in one that said no UIs and I'm thinking, hmm, and so-and-so still in that program because I'm thinking, I saw some of that and I'll go back and sure enough, it's just turned in and no UIs and there were. So, so I'm sorry. No, go ahead. This out. So out of your five, two had an incident, but the three did not. So the two, you're clearly writing that out. Then the, the other three. Just list them and put no UIs for it. So just, okay. you know, do a little and no UIs, you know, that's fine. Okay. Just make sure that you're identifying that you reviewed who was in your program. And again, if you have, Two sites from the same provider, you do a log per site. If you have a residential site and a transportation area that could have, you know, if, if it's all the bike, make sure you have logs for each of those programs. Does that make sense? And sites that you have so that it's done. Could be the same consumers, but you are looking at things that happened in those different pieces of things too. Does that make sense? Awesome. Any other questions? Time for the 10 meeting. Mm -hmm. Computer told me. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm just kidding. So anyway, 
and always, if you have questions, don't don't hesitate to reach out to Laurel or I. That's what we're here for. Okay, I went yesterday and new program director at one of the day programs, feeling a little overwhelmed with the process and making sure that because you you know even getting through to his staff to understand why it's important to write them up and and, and we also just real one quick note that because we have just a minute behavior logs do not substitute for incident reports okay so a lot of people think oh i wrote it on the behavior log so i don't have to do an incident report because i'm putting it on this if it's one of those ui items or something that you would consider very unusual out of service or those things you're going to put it on your behavior log it's also going to fill out that incident report because what we don't want is when's that behavior log go in anybody Come on, this is not a tough question. Everybody, have, nobody has anybody with the behavior log. That's interesting, though, because I don't know if every county runs it that way. Well, because if it's addressed in a behavior support strategies, it's, be, it's already identified as a, as a concern, so it's not unusual anymore. Well, so, but it's not whether it's unusual to the individual. It's whether it's an unusual incident. So let's just use, for example. And that's usually the question that people get. But let's use for an example that um, I'm known to um, be sporadic and start clearing things off of a table. And so you're noting when I do that, right? But this time when I do that, I launch something across and it hits another peer and causes, you know, them distress or it had to clear, you know, the, something that causes injury to someone, destruction of property, those types of things that might involve that. Okay, you that's to, different then, because it is. I mean, it's still being addressed in the behavior plan, but there was a different outcome. Right, that, so that's what I'm okay. saying. So if you see something that would fall into those UI categories, like, you know, something happened, even though they're, no, they're known to always go and take something out of someone's lunch and do whatever, but this time they take it and it goes. So there's a lot of folks that think, that just because it's in the plan, even though it might be that they don't have to do the incident report in conjunction to that. So that's, and it's confusing and I get that because you're, you're tracking things, you're doing that, but let's just make sure that, because the biggest piece of that is we put it on a log and it goes in and it's reviewed on the, by the you send it in by the fifth of the month and then somebody's reviewing those and then the team's getting back. So we're, you know, 40 days out with something that, you know, could have stopped happening because Everybody got notified within 24 hours and you made some different things or, or had to take some immediate steps. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. Sorry if I wasn't real clear. Yeah, I just don't think that's being run consistently across the Well, that's something that our regional manager often quotes to me um, or used to quote to me that, you know, incidents that are UIs or MUIs, even though they're part of a behavior, um, Review of things do not, you know, that, that's not a substitute for it because it's too not timely enough to have immediate action. So. <laughs> Best practices. All right. Well, thanks, John. You're welcome. What else we got? Just the. Just the. Do you guys today announce the drawing? <laughs> Every day is Wednesday. Like, oh, I don't know. That's why I was asking. Okay, guys. We have one more thing to do as a group. I think last time we all got together, there was a drawing for a gift card. Do you guys remember that? Um, you still got to be last meeting. So, all right, here we go. So, last meeting, hang tight, pause. Um, one, two, three, look at me, right? <laughs> last meeting, we started doing a drawing for a gift card for everybody who was, was joining us. So, what Jamie has done uh, has she's gathered all the names of everybody that's either joining us through Zoom or joining us in the room. That was cool, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> um, and so we're gonna do a drawing. And in the future, what we'll probably do is have the host facilitate this. But seeing as we're just kind of all learning how we're gonna do this, I'll, we'll, we'll do it as a group. So 
who we're gonna have our guest speaker Jen. Yes, is, we'll do the. And they get reimbursed for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a gas card. We'll reimburse you. <laughs> um, no, that's not true. Gift card can be given at later date. Jamie yeah. has it somewhere. So, I, does anybody have any further questions or um, comments? Happy moment. Happy moment. It's a happy moment. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> what is the happy? What is the happy moment? Keep those thoughts to yourself. <laughs> You can't, they just go. I just, anyways, thank you for all of you who are joining us or joined us today. Um, if you're sticking around for the 10 meeting, we'll see you soon. And for the rest of you, keep on keeping on. Take care. <laughs> Have, a, Have a wonderful uh, month. We'll see you next month. Bye, everyone.